today on Beyond Six Seconds. I dream of a world where people are aware <laughs> of their skills and actually do something about it themselves. It's like how we go to the gym and we take care of our body, but we don't do that for our skills muscles. Welcome to Beyond Six Seconds, the podcast that goes beyond the six second first impression to share the extraordinary stories and achievements of everyday people. I'm your host, Carolyn Keel. On today's episode, I'm speaking with Roxana Radulescu. Roxana is a learning and development consultant and the founder of All Personal, where she provides coaching services focused on personal skills development. She is also the host of the All Personal podcast, which features stories about how people discover and use their unique sets of skills throughout their lives. Roxana, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. It's good to be here. Great to have you here as well. So tell me, how did you get the inspiration to start All Personal? Well, I worked in L&D for about 10 years. And so that involves a lot of design and delivery around soft skills, which I call personal skills, because what I know is that they're not soft at all. Mm -hmm. So they are essential right mm -hmm. now in today's world. Yes. And you know what I noticed was that, okay, so people barely had the chance to practice in real life what they were learning on the training session. Mm -hmm. And that is because learning is different in a training session than afterwards. So in, in training, you learn stuff about things that are possible, or it's the learning about equation, right? So mm -hmm. you find out new information. Right. And then... In real life, you actually learn how to, and it's the how to that I was missing, especially in the case of soft skills, of personal skills, they take practice. They take, it takes a lot of practice to develop them because we're talking about developing habits. We need to learn or relearn or unlearn some of the habits and recreate those new habits that we want to have and that will help us more in the future. So habits cannot be created in one training session. So what coaching does is it teaches you the, uh, the how to afterwards. So it's similar if you want to go into a gym, right? Mm -hmm. we, we all go to the gym to build our body muscles, but we don't do it once or twice a year, right? right? So we go there constantly working out and making sure that those muscles are in shape. It's the same thing with the skills. The more you practice them, the more these muscles are going to show up and really help you when, when you need them most. So this is why I wanted to start All Personal and this kind of coaching the personal skills and actually being a personal skills coach like a personal trainer at the gym. Wow. So you've had a successful career working in learning and development and working on training. And then you realized that it's really that practice and reinforcement that helps people build their skills yeah. into habits. And so that's why you started your own coaching business. So is that something that you help people identify their skills and strengthen them? Yes, that's what we do. So the, the first session is a um, discovery session. And we usually go to those skills that they have and that they appreciate. And it's, it's funny how, you know, just helping people and talking to people about their strong skills, it makes them think about, okay, so what are my strong skills? Because we don't necessarily think about that all the time. And those skills that are the strongest in us, we just take them for granted. We just don't even think about that anymore. We just do that stuff. And that's because we are at a mastery level let's say, mm -hmm. in, in using that skill. So we, it's that level where you don't even think about it. You just do it. it. It's almost automatic and it's so natural for you to do it. And so that's one of the things that we do in this discovery session. Okay, let's see what your strong skills muscles are. Let's see what 
but your dormant skills muscles are. So those skills that you have, they're, they're still there and you might have avoided using for several reasons because they didn't give you the results that you needed, let's say. And let's see what we can do with them. What if we wake those skills up and start to work on them and build them up again and so they can also support your strong skills muscles. So we, that's what I, I do in, in the first session. And we decide, okay, so what are those skills muscles that we are going to work on depending on what you need to do? Mm-hmm. So for me, the essential element in, in, in my coaching relationship is the when factor. Because when you need to do stuff, that's when you are willing to practice that's when you want to do something about that situation to improve it. Right. So if you have, let's say, a presentation to prepare Mm -hmm. um, and that you will be delivering for the board, that's when you want to work on your presentation skills. And that's when you're ready to practice and go through the routines and do the exercises that I can provide so that you improve some of your muscles like speaking or improve your voice or work on your body language and really be aware of what you can do to improve your presentation. But it's only if and when you need to do it. So that's that's essential for me. Right. That makes sense to have that goal in mind. Um, yeah. And, and focus and develop your skills for that goal. Yeah, Very exactly. Good. So when did you start your own business? Well, there are like several starting points for me. Mm-hmm. So um, I first started to think about it in the summer of 2016. And um, at that point, I was still heading the um, L&D department at a European international law firm. So um, that's when the idea came in my mind. And then the second half of 2016 and the beginning of 2017 meant my family getting prepared to move to Canada. So there goes my business idea still Mm. in the back of my head somewhere, but that was it. And um, then in the summer of 2017, I started to work on my website. And that was the actual start of it, because I had to think about the kind of content that I wanted to have. And that made, made sense to have and the videos and the articles that I needed to write and recording some podcasts because I, I started being a, a guest on podcasts. And so this is how afterwards I came up with the idea of having my own podcast and so on. So it's then when I started to actually work on it. And then I also attended many networking events and so I could talk to people and get their opinion on how they learned best and um, I also wanted to do some speaking so um, I went and had my um, TEDx talk Mm -hmm. in in autumn of last year and it was um, a talk where I was speaking about um, how our skills muscles change the way we deal with change so uh, I have it on my website if you're curious to see how that wind. Oh, absolutely. So I basically put myself out there step by step. It didn't just um, come up like that all at once. And then um, I registered it as a business and that's it. So I'm pretty much, I've been doing that for the past six months. So I'm pretty much still a rookie entrepreneur. <laughs> wow, that's really exciting. And yeah, that's awesome that you did a TEDx talk. Yeah, it was an awesome experience. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So, you know, since we're talking about skills and uh, developing our our strengths, what would you say are the most important skills that you use to run and grow your business? Uh, Yeah, my favorite topic. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, you know, I've woken up so many, um, so many skills muscles in this journey, I have to say, um, and it helped me to think about it and realize what they were. So, because, you know, you go, when you go on your own, you you rely very much on all of that experience that you accumulated, which is the good thing. So some of my strong skills were the communication skills that helped me a lot. So it's my communication style that is non-judgmental and it helped me. My speaking skills helped me a lot and also my listening skills and especially for me as a coach, that's an essential skill to have. 
But that only happened because I had been training these skills for a long time and um, I had been using them constantly. So I knew they were strong and they didn't disappoint me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, on the other hand, when you're a new entrepreneur, you have to do a lot of business um, related things. And that was the side that I kind of missed practice in. Mm -hmm. So for instance, networking, even networking was different because when I was the head of LMD, I was going to events and networking a lot and that was fine, but I didn't have that business goal in mind with me all the time. So as an entrepreneur, the whole networking purpose changed. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, okay, meeting new people and talking to people and getting their ideas. And it was also following up and staying in touch and seeing how I can help them further down the road. So it was that kind of also the inception of the selling process, if you want to. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I had to relearn how to do that's the skill and then I had to work a lot on my patience because you know I thought I was one of the most patient people in the world mm -hmm. and uh, you know I still am when it comes to other people but when it comes to me and what I'm supposed to do in my business I realized I wanted immediate results. Mm. And, you know, that didn't work so well for me because, you know, I was getting very disappointed if I didn't get those results. And that wasn't helping me in actually getting up and going to the next step and doing the next thing that I needed to do. So patience, it's, it's something that I needed to cultivate. And it took me to that discipline of no matter what happens, no matter how long you have to wait for the result to show up, you still have to do that video or work on that content or go to that meeting mm -hmm. or, you know, and it also helped me build resilience as well. And that I think it's, it's crucial to have for an entrepreneur. Absolutely. All of those skills are, are really important. And you can bring your own strengths to the table when you're building your business. But almost every entrepreneur that I speak with definitely finds themselves in a new territory and they have to either develop those dormant skills or just mm -hmm. get new skills altogether in order to run their business on their own. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's true. But you know what? The beauty of it is that because you use those dormant skills a whole lot because you need them. You really need them. Mm -hmm. um, so you cannot ignore them anymore. So you choose to actually use them. And because of that, you get more accustomed to that muscle. And it's not as painful as it was using it at the beginning. And you kind of get used to it as well. And you realize at some point that mm, that was pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you start mm -hmm. to be surprised of how you use that skill muscle. And that's, that's a, the start of, of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, in running your business, I know you've been, uh, you're still relatively at the beginning of running your business, but um, yeah. would love if you could tell me a bit about the biggest challenge you faced in either launching or, or running your business and how you address that challenge. Well, my biggest challenge was and still is, um, I have to say, being on my own. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I found out that for most entrepreneurs, that's the case. Yeah. They feel very lonely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I'm missing a team of people to help with, you know, the bazillion things that I need to do, like creating content for courses, for the website, videos, writing, recording podcasts, designing training sessions and preparing coaching sessions and business development, networking and everything. So, and staying sane in the process. <laughs> so, you know, and for me, it was all that while being in a new country and also filling miles away from my professional network, which I then realized wasn't the case because we have the internet and we have all of these platforms that help us communicate and keep in touch and work together even miles away. So that was solved. But, um, you know, I still haven't this all figured out. But what I've learned in the process is that this is my new normal. Mm -hmm. So I have to look at it as, okay, this is my situation right now. 
and let's see what I can do with what I have in this situation right now. Mm -hmm. So because, again, it's about the habit, right? I I was used to having a full-time job. And so for me, it was I had to go somewhere to do my job and then come back home. And so now I am my job. Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes with me pretty much everywhere I go (laughs) and Mm -hmm. you know that's especially at home so when I found myself in this situation um okay so my job is with me I am it it is very much at home so why not get support from my family members because they were here at home right next to me Mm -hmm. seeing me you know struggling and seeing my reactions of I don't know joy or disappointment or frustration or enthusiasm because it was up and down most of the time but for instance I used my husband as uh, an IT and operations director so Mm -hmm. he's the one who helps me with the technical stuff Mm -hmm. and with you know making sure security is there on my laptop or um, the next software that I'm installing? Is it good? Is it bad? How does it work? And stuff like that. And he also challenges me on some of the ideas because you do need, as an entrepreneur, you need someone to challenge you uh, with some ideas and to help you prioritize because I have a hundred ideas a day and I'm happy to do all of them and I'm so proud of all of them. And then I need to start implementing them. And that's the hard part. So I need to prioritize them. And what I found is if you have someone to help with that, it it helps. And, you know, I have my daughter, for instance, who is my artistic director, Mm -hmm. because she she's the one who drew the logo for me. Uh And I let I left it the way she drew it simply because I wanted it to be all personal to me as well. So basically what we did is we took one of her strong skills muscles, which is drawing and used it for something concrete. I really needed it Mm -hmm. and I didn't have it, (laughs) but she did. So we used hers and uh, it worked. So she is my artistic director helping me, including with with the videos, telling me, mom, you need to record 100 videos, not just 20, if you want people to know what you're doing and who you are. So, (laughs) you know, it's getting those resources that are right in front of you and which are maybe a bit more difficult to notice because as an entrepreneur, you're so much into that thing and thinking about the next step that you need to take and thinking about how you didn't get that result and how alone you are and how nobody understands what Mm -hmm. you're trying to do. And then if you kind of ask yourself, so one of the questions that I ask myself a lot is this, so where are you now and what can you do with what you have now? And instead of thinking about the problems, that helps me think about solutions. Okay, so I'm here because I took some steps on this journey and this is what I can do now. And it helps me focus more on on the solution rather than the, the problem. Wow. Yeah, that's great advice really for, for anything in life or any time that we're feeling challenged yeah. or overwhelmed. It, that's great. Yeah, yeah. What would you say has been your most meaningful success story with a client that you've had so far? Well, for me, it's, you know, the beauty and and you know that because you are in the uh, learning industry as well. Mm -hmm. But the the beauty of that is being in training and coaching is that all the sessions are meaningful one way or another. Mm -hmm. So like to me, the best feeling is when I see my clients thinking about or becoming aware of new possibilities or new approaches, while also relating that experience with their immediate situations, right? So hearing them say, aha, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, training or a coaching session means that they can apply that concept. And that's the whole point of why they're there in the first place, because, you know, it's it's a journey of rediscovery for all of us, for me as well. Because you were there in in the coaching session and you help them discover and work on their skills. And it's amazing how you can immediately relate their need to one of your needs as well. That's always fascinating for me in, in the coaching sessions that I deliver. 
But I guess, you know, the best lines that I've heard so far are um, something that, you know, I, I delivered a great training session today and I felt very confident because we had prepared it. And that was one of my clients who wants to be a, a trainer. So we, we had been working on her presentation and design for online training sessions and how to engage your participants and all of that stuff. And we had prepared that session and she was happy about it. So that was one or something like... Um, I think I have overworked myself and uh, the introvert in me needs to recharge. So I now realize it's not okay to be super active all the time. That was coming out of a coaching session when I was working with an HR professional and trying to, you know, help her put her priorities in place. Uh, and she was super active. And at, at one point she was like, okay, you know what? It's, it's not me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I need to sit down with me and recharge a little bit. Or just simply, you know, thank you for listening to me. And your questions make me think hard. And that's what I like <laughs> about the coaching sessions. And uh, yeah. But my favorite, I think, is I did my speaking and breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. And I noticed they also helped me be more confident. So I guess that's how it works. In my coaching sessions, um, preparing people before a presentation or speaking or even before important meetings, they have to do some breathing exercises and a lot of diction exercises and speech exercises to prepare for that meeting. And initially, they're a bit reluctant in doing that and they just don't see the point because it, it looks like play pretty right. much. Mm -hmm. So, And then because they do that and they have to do it regularly, they see the results because they see they're not stumbling anymore and they have enough air in their lungs to make their voice heard more. And that gives them the confidence that they need because they already know that they are good at it because they're prepared and maybe they're more prepared than other people in the room, let's say. And that gives them like an extra point that's there in the back of their head and thinking, you know what, I'm prepared for this because I worked my speech muscles and my presenting muscles. And so I'm ready. And having that mindset with them in that important meeting or presentation is what they need to get past those one, two minutes at the beginning where you are absolutely afraid that the world is going to crumble mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and make them look more confident because they are more confident. Yeah, that importance of making sure that you get enough air and, and take a big breath and pay yeah. attention to your breathing. It's really fundamental, you know, because mm -hmm. it helps you be less tense. It helps you clear your mind. So yeah, that's actually a great thing to keep in mind when you're, yeah. when you're trying something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So looking forward with your business, what kind of business goals do you have or, mm -hmm. or where do you see your business going in the next couple of years? Well, you know, I dream of a world where people are aware <laughs> of their skills and actually do something about it themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like how we go to the gym and we take care of our body, but we don't do that for our skills muscles. And they are there going and walking with us everywhere we go. And we don't think about them. And because of that, we don't use them to their full capacity. Or we choose to ignore them because why use uh, one skill that didn't give me any result in the past? So we are simply not using them in the right proportions, if you want. And we need them all the time in all of our interactions at work or at home. At the end of the day, we'd all want to have better communication skills. We'd all want to be better presenters or we'd all want to be able to understand other people and listen to them better or manage our team better. We all want to do that. But it's like, we're waiting for something or someone to bestow that upon us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's as if an external factor can fix that for us. And it's not the case. We can fix that. We can 
if we decide to do something about it and understand that it's not a one-time thing, it's practice and it's regular. So my goal is to increase awareness that learning is something that we do all the time, whether we think about it or not, or whether we like it or not, we do it. Mm -hmm. And we simply need to notice what and how we're doing things regularly. And this is crucial because again, if we want to change something, we need to change our approach of doing it. So the first thing, knowing what works best for me, for instance, when I'm networking and what doesn't, is essential, right? Because then I can change what doesn't work with something else. So it's very much a trial and, and error exercise. So my goal is to make people think of their skills muscles and decide to work them out and keep them in good shape. And that's why it is all personal, because it's a personal decision that we can make about our own personal skills. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said earlier, you really want to build those skills into habits so that you're practicing them yes. all the time. Yeah, Good. right. So how can people get in touch with you to learn more about All Personal? Okay, so my website is the hub uh, for all the ways to get in touch with me. It's personalskillscoach.com. And there you will also find the links to my Facebook page, YouTube channel and SoundCloud for the podcast. And they are all called All Personal. So it's easy to find. And you can also find me on LinkedIn as Roxana Radulescu. And I think, you know, the fastest way to reach me, get in touch if you want to, is email me at all at personalskillscoach.com or just call or text me. My number is 647-568-1596, and it's also on my website. And um, for your listener, I'm ready to offer a free discovery coaching session. So oh, <laughs> if thank anyone you. wants to get in touch with me after they listen to this, yeah, we can, we can take it from there. That's fabulous. And I will put your contact information in the show notes for our podcast so people can view it there. And, you know, if you're interested in a free discovery session with Roxana, please uh, get in contact with her and mention the Beyond Six Seconds podcast. Thank you very much. That's uh, very yeah. generous of you. You're welcome. Wonderful. So as we close out, is there anything else that you'd like our listeners to know or anything that they can help or support you with in your business? Yeah. Well, first off, I have an invitation that I want to make because the All Personal podcast features people who discovered their own learning path so far and are willing to share their story. So, um, you know, be my guest <laughs> to be my guest. <laughs> if any of your listeners want to speak on my podcast, just contact me and we can plan for that. And other than that, yes, they can support me by, you know, joining me in this journey of awareness and by thinking about their skills, muscles and by spreading the word as well. Because my favorite quote on learning is learning is movement from moment to moment. Moment. So if we can all move into it, that would just be fantastic. Fabulous. Well, thank you, Roxana, so much for being a guest on my podcast. It was great to talk to you about learning and, and still building. And, you know, I think it's something that everyone who's listening can take to heart. It's, uh, you know, we all have goals and we all need to build our stills to achieve what we want to achieve in our lives. So thank you so much for sharing your story and advice with us. Yeah, you're so very welcome. It was a pleasure being here and talking about it. Great, wonderful. Especially to you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Beyond Six Seconds podcast. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes or your favorite podcast player so you won't miss any episodes. You can also find all the show notes and links we discussed in this episode at our website, www.beyondsixseconds.com. Until next time.